Hey, it's James here, and today I'm going to be looking and comparing two legendary podcasting setups. We're going to be looking at both of these microphones. You probably recognize both of them, really famous. You'll have seen top podcasters using both of these microphones, comparing the differences, talking through how you kind of set them up, the pros and cons to each setup, and also comparing how they sound. And let's put them side by side and put them through their paces. Hey, so my name is James Mulvaney. I'm an entrepreneur working in the audio space. I'm founder of radio.co, podcast.co, matchmaker.fm, and Q Podcast. So you're welcome to go and check them out if you like. I'm always creating videos like this, all about microphones, podcasting gear, how to build your audience, all of that good stuff. You know the drill. So if you want to get more content like this, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, because I'm pushing out new videos every single Friday. And in this video, I'm gonna be looking at these two mics and two legendary podcasting setups, if you will. Firstly, the Blue Yeti. Uh, this is the new version called the Blue Yeti X. Also looking at the Shure SM7B, you'll see people like Joe Rogan using this microphone and how you connect them both to your computer. So let's dive in and let's also test how they both sound when put side by side. So firstly, I wanted to talk about the Blue Yeti. This is an iconic microphone. It's been around probably for, I'd say 10 or 11 years since maybe the late 2000s, early 2010s. We've seen a lot of podcasters use this microphone. Uh, they've just released this Blue Yeti X, which is like the, the new incarnation of it. It shares a lot of the things that made the Blue Yeti really popular, but also they've innovated and they've brought it into uh, the 2020s, if you like, by adding some new features and also some desktop software to enhance the functionality. But really what I wanted to talk about is the differences between these setups. So firstly, the Blue Yeti. This is great if you're just one person recording a podcast. One of the cons about this microphone is you can't have multiple mics. Whereas if you're using the SM7B, you might use this frequently in a studio setting, which I'll get onto in a bit. But yeah, this is a great microphone to start podcasting with. And this is why it's so popular. And also the price tag of this is really appealing. It's around $200, quite affordable. And if you want a quick fix to get good sound on your computer, this is perhaps the way forward. It will connect via USB. You don't need to power it externally or anything like that. You've got your headphone output on it as well, so you can monitor what's going on, not only on your own voice, but perhaps if you're recording a podcast or you're doing a Zoom call or something, uh, that could all be routed through this microphone as well. And also, the form factor is really appealing for a lot of people getting started. Obviously, it comes with a stand, which kind of sits nicely on your desk. You know, you can easily move this thing around. Um, it's raised up just about enough. So if I'm sat here, I'm on quite a high table, so it's kind of quite close up to me. I think if I was sat at my desk, it might a little be a little sort of lower down. I'm quite a tall guy, but I would say it's beneficial that it's raised up slightly. A lot of USB mics are quite low down and you really need to be quite close to your microphone. So for most people who want to get started with a podcast, want to get started video streaming, or get started with just really enhancing the sound coming into your computer, instead of just relying on a built-in laptop microphone or your iMac or your desktop computer microphones or your webcam microphone, which are never going to sound as good as a professional uh, microphone, this is a USB mic. It's considered kind of studio quality. Um, and it will give you that additional edge over your kind of standard audio setup, which is great. And it's really, really important. Even if you're just doing Zoom calls, having a good microphone can make the difference between just sort of sounding echoey and washed out uh, versus sounding kind of clean and crisp and professional. So whenever we're talking to clients, the first thing we always say is get a good quality microphone. And this is why a lot of people have opted to go for the Blue Yeti because it's affordable, um, it's kind of plug and play, and it's just been around for ages and it's just a sort of trusted workhorse for solo podcasters. Okay, so moving on to the Shure SM7B, another legendary mic, another legendary setup here. Pretty much every podcast studio we've ever built, we use this mic. It's really popular, but of course, first drawback compared to the Blue Yeti, you need an XLR cable. If you're not familiar with audio, you might not even recognize what sort of connector this is. It's a three pin connector specifically designed for professional microphones. But of course you can't plug this into your computer, right? It's not a USB and it requires a power source to get this microphone live. So you can't just go out and buy one of these microphones and hope it will work. You'll also need to get what is known as an audio interface. A lot of people and over the past so 10 years or so, again, this is legendary, we'll be using this. This is the sort of first audio interface that we purchased here at radio.co and podcast.co. We've probably been using this since around 2009, 2010. Costs about 120 pounds. It has got two inputs, which is great if you wanna have two microphones. 
and this is really good. This will produce really high fidelity audio quality. And effectively, all this is is a sound card that is external. So it's a sound card that you can connect to your computer via USB. This will also power your microphone. It will power other mics as well if they require what's known as phantom power. So if you're using like a condenser microphone. But the key is this has got two XLR inputs. So this will mean that your audio cable here can be routed into this interface, which will then convert it to a USB signal and uh, connect it to your computer. Interestingly, Focusrite have just kind of innovated and they've moved this product along, just like Blue Yeti have uh, with the Blue Yeti X. So actually today we're recording on the Focusrite Vocaster 2, uh, which is a very similar product to this, but it's just moved along in terms of technology. There's processing, there's Bluetooth on here, and one of the key differences between their old Scarlett 2i2 and the new Vocaster is the amount of gain. Getting on to gain again, we're getting a bit techy here. This microphone, the Shure SM7B, is notoriously gain hungry. That means it requires a lot of amplification, a lot of volume boosting before you get a good clean signal onto your computer. A lot of people will use something called a cloud lifter or effect head, which are kind of, again, a third device that you will need to connect between your microphone and your USB interface. You'll also notice I've got this microphone mounted on a boom arm. You can't just set this microphone up, it just comes with a screw mount. So you either need a desk stand or a boom arm to connect to this too. Otherwise, it will just be kind of flopping around on the end of the cable, which is no good. So again, if you think about it, you're suddenly starting to spend a lot more than just the mic. That's why I think the Blue Yeti appeals to people who are just getting started, because it's kind of an all-in-one package. It's got a stand. It's got the audio interface built into it, so you can connect directly to your laptop or your computer. You don't need to worry about going out and investing in XLR cables or stands. But of course, you can only use this as a single mic. And as I mentioned earlier, why this is our go-to microphone in podcasting studios is because you can have multiple SM7Bs. And we've kitted out studios with two, four, and six of these microphones within them. But if you want to connect multiple microphones, you might need uh, an external interface that's larger than this. So this obviously has got two inputs, but if you want to connect a studio together, perhaps with four or six or even eight microphones, you might want to consider buying something like this PreSonos Studio 192, which we've used in studio installs in the past, um, which I believe has got up to eight inputs on it. So you can have up to eight microphones connected. So again, it really depends on your circumstances. And adding a larger interface like this, or even purchasing something like the Rodecaster Pro, will just add additional cost to your studio setup. So again, you can see why a sort of $200 package is really appealing to a lot of people who want to get started in podcast versus spending four or $500 on a microphone, and that's just for one microphone, plus then say $50 on a good quality cable, another $100 to $150 on an interface, or potentially even more if you want something like the Rodecaster Pro 2. So that's a pretty top level summary of why you see these two setups being used time and time again. They've obviously both got their pros and cons. It depends on your budget, for one. Working with Shure SM7B, you're going to be spending a lot more money straight off the bat. I can tell you that for nothing. However, working with something like the Blue Yeti is going to be limiting because really this is just designed for you and the microphone. It's not designed for multiple mic setups, not really designed for studios. Um, and also I'd say this is probably more friendly like as a portable option like if you want to take this around. If you want to start moving like multiple Shure SM7Bs around, which we've done in the past for clients, you kind of need a lot more stuff. You need a lot more cabling, stands, etc., to support it. So again, you know, this you can put in a suitcase. If you start taking four of these around with four stands and stuff, you start expanding your kit significantly. So finally, let's just do a quick test and see how these sound. We're not in a perfect studio environment here. We're sat in the office. So there's a little bit of noise in the background, some traffic going past outside. You can probably see there's a bit of an echo, but I wanted to just kind of compare these two microphones side by side see how the sound quality differs, and I'd like to get your opinion. So let me know in the comments below which one you think sounds best, because obviously most people aren't recording in a perfect environment. Most people don't have a sound-treated studio. Most people are generally recording either at home or in an office, or even sometimes on location. Both of these microphones can lend themselves well to each scenario, but I wanted to just do a quick sound test so you can tell me uh, in the comments what you think sounds best. Okay, so now we've switched to the two microphones. And to begin with, I want to do a bit of a blind test. So um, I'm gonna switch between these two mics now and I want you to guess which one's which. So this is microphone number one. And this is microphone number two. Again, this is microphone number one. And this is microphone number two. Let's switch to microphone number one again. So this is microphone number one. 
and we'll switch back to number two. This is microphone number two. Okay, so now I'm going to reveal which one's which. So this is the Shure SM7B. You can hear what the Shure SM7B sounds like. Again, we've got this connected via the Focusrite Vocaster 2. So there's no processing or filters or effects applied. And now we're going to switch to the Blue Yeti. So this is the Blue Yeti X, which is the Blue Yeti's new version of the microphone. Again, we've got this connected directly to a MacBook. We've not got any of the processing applied. So there we go. To summarize, both of these setups have got their pros and cons. They're both very legendary in their own right, and they've both been around for a long time. You'll see numerous podcasters use both of these microphones over the past sort of 10 years or so. However, I want to know which, in your opinion, is the winner. Do you prefer the Shure SM7B or do you prefer the Blue Yeti X? Please let me know in the comments below. As ever, if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate a big thumbs up. That would really help me out. And also, if you enjoy content like this, hit that subscribe button and I'll speak to you very soon. Take it easy and bye for now. Hey, before you go, let's connect on LinkedIn. I'm always posting interesting content like this over on my LinkedIn channel, and it'd be cool to hang out. So go to jamesm.com slash connect, click on LinkedIn, send me a connection request. Once we're connected, send me a message, say you came over from this video, and I'll send you some cool things for free. Sound fair? Well, head to jamesm.com slash connect and connect with me on LinkedIn, and I'll see you over there.